Backbiting, of course, is prohibited, irrespective whether in Ramadan or outside Ramadan. However, would a woman who complains to her husband about her mother-in-law, will she be considered as a person who has backbited? Regarding backbiting being haram and the major sin we discussed in the last episode, and there are various hadith and Quranic verses, it's one of the major sins. But as far as a wife complaining to the husband regarding the mother-in-law, but naturally she's speaking something about the mother-in-law, but the mother-in-law would not like anyone speaking about. So it does come in the category of backbiting. Is it a sin, is the question. Such incidences where a person complains to someone and thinks and feels that once the complaint is given to the person, maybe there is a correction in action, like a wife complaining to the husband about the mother-in-law, or the wife complaining to the husband about a son, that he is doing so and so things which are wrong. So the husband will correct being a father of the child. Or maybe one of the two brothers is going and complaining to the father that my brother did so and so thing which is wrong. It's speaking ill about him behind. But that is so that the father can correct the brother. So these things have been permitted. Because the main reason while doing this thing should not be to mock at someone or should not be to belittle anyone. But the main purpose should be that the person who the person is complaining about, mm -hmm. there should be correction in act. And if you read the commentary of Imam al nawbi as far as the hadith of uh, Sahih Muslim, which we discussed, in the last episode, hadith number 6265, in which the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that, do you know what is backbiting? And the Sahaba said that the messenger knows the best. So the Prophet said that if someone speaks about another person behind the back which he would not like, that's called as backbiting. And the Sahaba asked, what if I'm speaking about the person is true? The Prophet said, then it will be called as backbiting. If it's false, it will be called as slandering. So based on this, the commentary of this hadith according to Imam Annawi, he said that backbiting, gibat, in six conditions it's permitted. Number one, he says that if something is told to a ruler of the land or to a judge, complaining against the act of another human being who has done wrong to the person, maybe he's stolen some wealth from you, taken your property away, or an injustice to you. So if you go and complain to a ruler or to a judge against another human being, another Muslim, this is permitted because you want the wrong to be undone. So in such cases, Gipat is permitted. Category number two, that if you complain to someone who you feel that person has an influence on the person who has done an evil act or a sin, and you feel that he will stop doing that evil act, you're permitted. For example, if you know of a friend who's very close to the person who's done an evil act or done a sin, and if you tell him that your friend has done so and so, so and so thing, or drinking alcohol, and you feel that he has an influence on the other person, and he can prevent him from doing the sin, it's permitted to keep up. So the question regarding the wife complaining to the husband either comes in the first category or the second category. Either it's an injustice done to the wife, or maybe the wife wants to tell the husband that you correct the mother-in-law, it may come in first two categories. The remaining four categories which Imam Annawi said Gibat can be done. The third is that if you're approaching a mufti or a religious person for some religious advice, so you may say that my father has done so-and-so act or my wife has done so-and-so act and describe the act and ask me what should I do. Even in this case, if you avoid naming the father or the mother or say in the third person, that my friend's father is doing so-and-so, it is preferable. But in such cases, while taking religious advice or a fatwa for a particular act, it's permissible. The fourth category, which Imam al says that gibad is permitted, is that when you know of a narrator who is a liar, and if he narrates any hadith, so it becomes incumbent on you to tell the people that he's a liar, or his memory is weak because to protect the sharia. Or, for example, if someone is selling a slave, and if he knows that there are some bad habits in the slave, or maybe he does adultery, so it's compulsory that the person who's selling it should tell to the buyer that the slave has so-and-so false. Or 
if a person asks you that he wants to marry another person and asks you how is the person, so that becomes obligatory on you to tell the wrong points or the points which are not correct in that human being. Your intention here is not to belittle that human being. Your intention here is not to degrade the person, but your intention is to give the right information, whether for marriage or for business. So in these cases, this is the fourth category where Imam an nawi says that is permitted. As far as the fifth category is concerned, that if you know a person is doing a major sin openly, like he's drinking openly, or if he's cheating openly, or if he's robbing openly, so then you can tell the public at large that this person is a person who cheats, or a person who robs, or a person who discontinuously bidah, or there is a religious person who you know, who is doing fatwa and you know that he's not a person who's truthful. So here it's permitted that you can speak against the person. And the sixth category is that while identifying a person, if someone asks you for identification, at that time, to identify the person, you may have to use his nickname, which the person may not like. Like you may have to tell that the person who's short, person who's tall. So here you're using these nicknames to identify the person which the person may not like. Mainly for identification. Here also if you can avoid this nickname, for identification is the best. But if you can't avoid, you can do. Imam Manavi has mentioned six categories in which gibbat is permitted. Thank you, Dr. Zakir.